वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल गाइज सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट आई वॉन्ट टू इन्फॉर्म यू ऑल दैट वी आर वॉट टू रीच टू पॉइंट फाइव के थैंक्स अलॉट टू ऑल ऑफ यू गाइज वेब सब्सक्राइब वे जस्ट फ्यू सब्स अवे फ्रॉम टू पॉइंट फाइव के सो प्लीज ऑल दोज वेवन सब्सक्राइब आई रिक्वेस्ट यू ऑल इफ माई वीडियोज वॉट एनी हेल्प टू यू ऑल एट ऑल इफ इट वॉज लाइक यूजफुल टू यू ऑल प्लीज इट वॉन्ट टेक माई एफर्ट टू जस्ट क्लिक द सब्सक्राइब बटन Let's go, guys. Let's. Uh, so basically, in this, um, basically in this video, what I have done is that I have compiled all the questions uh, where I am changing the answers, or where um, in most of some of most of these questions I have uh, already mentioned just after the video that uh, um, the changed answer. But I thought of compiling it all at once so that uh, there is no confusion left. Okay, guys. So let's go. So in question number one eighty seven, baby with diarrhea at four weeks of birth, born to a mother with HIV. Next step will be. So in this question, basically, uh, the I told that there was confusion, but now it is confirmed. The answer will remain. The answer, guys, will remain this HIV DNA PCR testing in dried blood to know the status of HIV. So this will remain the answer. Okay, guys. So question number uh, next will go question number one ninety three. So most uh, logical and cost effective approach for controlling rabies in a community with high uh, load of rabies cases will be okay. So basically, I told the answer for this um, was testing of dogs in the area. But uh, I think now after discussion and all, I think the best answer for this will be the eradication of stray dogs and vaccination of the dogs will be the best answer, guys. Okay, guys. Now we'll go to the next question. Just a sec. Okay. So next question, question number one seventy eight. Uh, urethral trauma question. Image given with extravasation of urine, inability to pass the urine with blood at the meters, and the X-ray was given. So basically, I told that the answer for this will be bulva. But uh, I had missed the uh, pelvic fracture, and in pelvic fracture, most commonly. Uh, your proximal urethra is injured, uh, so the answer for this will not be pelvic. The answer for this will be membranous urethra, guys. That will be the answer. Now, question number one sixty nine. So in this question, I had mentioned right after the video that the question, uh, this question that antibody prophylaxis in a child and now undergoing dental procedure is not required. The question was not required in so for infective endocarditis. So the answer I had mentioned it in the comments. It will be the ASD. If it is uh, asked, not required. So basically, uh, antibody prophylaxis is not required in asynotic congenital congenital heart disease. So the answer for this will be ASD. Okay. Now question number one sixty four. Uh, there is a lady with a history of throat infections, oral ulcers, fatigue. Now presents with proteinuria and hematuria. Uh, so basically, this uh, answer I had mentioned was post-infectious glomerular nephritis, and I had mentioned in the answer uh, of uh, comment section that uh, the answer will be lupus nephritis, and the answer for this question will remain lupus nephritis, guys. It's not post-infectious glomerular nephritis; it is lupus lupus nephritis. Okay. Question number one sixty-three. Uh, blood picture of iron deficiency anemia was given, and few target cells were mentioned. And what will be the test to confirm the diagnosis? So while discussing this question itself, I, I was telling that HbA2 uh, level can be the answer. And now I am um, sure that the, this case was basically of thalassemia minor uh, because even the RBC count was given, and they actually wanted to count, um, uh, wanted us to calculate the Menzies index. Okay, guys. So the Menzies index in this case will be less than 13, so it will be a thalassemia minor. And to confirm this. We will require HbA2 level. Okay. Question number 154. A patient with high frequency hearing loss due to damage of basilar membrane structure closest to it. So this question is still a point of controversy between people. Now some uh, teachers are saying oval windows, some are saying trivascularis, and some are even saying modulus. So basically, um, I feel um, there is actually a, uh, a mistake in recalling the question. The question was there was high frequency loss. Due to damage of basilar membrane, the damage is in the basilar membrane, and what is the structure closest to it? So, uh, more, many people are saying oval window, but uh, I'm not sure about this yet actually. But I feel this answer will still remain trivascularis because it was more of an anatomic question rather than a pathological um, meaning. They wanted to know which is the structure closest to basilar membrane, so the answer I think will still remain trivascularis. Question of 150 at risk infants will include. So basically, in this, uh, I don't exactly remember because there are multiple combinations like A, B, C, A, B, C, and all. But the the answer for this will be uh, only two are there. One is artificial feeding and single mother. These two will be um, at risk infants because it is birth weight less than 2.5 kg and birth order five or more. So those will not be there, and these two will be in the same. But I don't know if there was the option like that. Okay, guys. Question number one forty-three. The features of microcytic hypochromic anemia. 
uh, with HPLC uh, showing increase in HBA to HBF and HBS peak was mentioned. So basically, this was like um, very confusing because they had given features of both uh, both your sickle cell anemia and thalassemia. But uh, after discussion and all, and there was since there was history of chest pain uh, and hand and foot syndrome, I think the answer for this, wait one second, guys, the answer for this will be uh, not thalassemia but sickle cell anemia will be the answer for this question. Okay, guys. Now let's go to the next question. Um, history of swelling in the neck was there midline followed by swelling on the side of the neck identify the actually the question was incorrect I had mentioned it in the uh, comment section itself after the video uh, so the answer for this there were options like the fatty spread and all and one option was that uh, one option was that uh, it cannot be diagnosed cannot be diagnosed by the FNSC so that option which I mentioned that it cannot be diagnosed by FNSC will be the incorrect statement because it can be diagnosed by the FNSC it is follicular carcinoma which cannot be used for diagnosis of uh, which cannot be diagnosed by FNSC so that will be the answer okay guys uh, now next question red tender swelling in the neck with acute history uh, with a short history of fever next best step and um, so this question also like uh, I had missed one point that it was a pulsatile swelling okay so uh, the confusing part is that they have mentioned um, uh, very short history so it seems like an infectious etiology but if i think if versatile was mentioned so that should be the keyword and answer should be usg and uh, not usg doppler i think usg doppler was in the option that should be the answer the initial course of antibodies also seem to be correct but versatile i think the answer more favorable will be the usg one the best answer will be that question number 120 correct about uchc okay so this question i told the answer will be established in areas where uh, there are no district or sub-district hospital but uh, um, after seeing um, Vivek Jain's video uh, so we, um, Dr. Vivek Jain's video I think that he has mentioned that the answer will be that it is for it is a hundred bed capacity so that should be the answer guys which is the correct statement this will be the answer and this will remain the thing only it's for, for 2.5 like population and it is for 4 to 5 BHCs not 2 to 3 BHCs so this will be the answer hundred beds will be the answer question number 117 the uh, metal poisoning which was the alopecia loss of violence in metadosis and nail changes and uh, behavioral changes so this question um, I, uh, this was a very close differential between arsenic and thalassium uh, thal uh, but uh, the point that is differentiating it in the favor of thallium is that there is metadosis which is apparently a classical feature of thallium along with that there is acute history uh, so the answer for this acute history shifts the answer towards the in arsenic we do get these changes like alopecia, behavioral changes and all nail changes but that is gradual so thallium will be the answer for this okay guys question number 116 history of use of anticoagulants following uh, the image was given okay one image was given of the toes ischemic necrosis so what will the answer for this okay so this question um this i i uh, looked it up and i had uh, seen photos as well and the timing and all so in uh, in the net and uh, in the net they are mentioning that the time that's required for um, HIT is two to five days, two to five days to occur, and for uh, warfarin to aspartic warfarin it takes around three to five weeks, three to five weeks. In our question it was mentioned two days post, but I wouldn't um, blindly trust a source from the net. Uh, so uh, according to um, what is this uh, sir's name? Prep Lider's teacher, that uh, pharmacology teacher. He has mentioned it, and also uh, in their notes, in Prep Lider notes, it has been mentioned that the warfarin to it occurs in one to two days. It occurs one to two days after the initiation. So I think the best answer we should follow a teacher rather than the net source. The best answer for this will be warfarin. Okay, guys. Um, uh, identify the hymen. So this question, um, uh, while discussing itself, I was telling that it can be accepted most probably. I think accepted and now I'm sure it, it was accepted. So accepted will be the answer. Uh, this question is another topic of discussion controversy. The contraceptive to be used in a female complaining of irregular bleeding and is lactating at 18 months of age. I think the most important point is two things here. One is that the person that woman is uh, lactating but she's at 18 months of age okay and irregularly bleeding. Irregular cycles were there. So some teachers are saying that the answer only progesterone said, but um, our ma'am, Sakshi ma'am, has told, and even I feel that uh, the answer should be malayan, which I had mentioned before also in my video. The answer should be the malayan because progesterone is no longer 
is no longer used. Secondly, uh, they had given this very important history of irregular bleeding, and as we know, OCPs are used to regularize the cycle. And also, the, it is lactating at 18 months of age. So basically, even if even if mala and causes a side effect to decrease lactation, that shouldn't be a problem now because in any case, the baby should stop by now. Um, you should you should so basically that is why I think that's the logic behind giving one duration as 18 months, and the other thing is irregular bleeding. So the answer will remain OCPs and Malayan. Question number 35 was post COVID, COVID features of now involvement in diabetic patient and immediate investigation will be. So this question also many people are still confused and they are still discussing that it could be nasal swab and all. But even many teachers, even many faculties have answered it by now it is MRI brain. And uh, that's what I wanted to tell because the most important thing was that in the question they were directing us towards an emergency condition that because now already there's intracranial involvement and we know in diabetic patient, post-COVID patient, mycomycosis is very common. So our immediate step would be to look into the extent of the disease already. That is why we'll go for the MRI of the brain. And nasal swab um, at, the, at the most can prove that it is a mucor, which we already have a suspicion of. So MRI brain will be the best answer for this. Okay. Question number 196, history of tubercular leprosy and aesthetic patches on the face complication will involve which now? So this question is still making a controversy. Um, so um, uh, the, uh, the research is, is showing that the most common now involved in uh, the tubercular leprosy is facial. And that was apparently a um, type 1 lepra reaction. And facial now is the most commonly involved now there. And but the distribution of the patches on the face it seemed like the areas of trigeminal sensory distribution, um, but I think even PubMed and other research papers have said that most common now is facial. So my answer will tilt towards that, but this is still a confusion, guys. Uh, question number one twenty six. Another question like that. So this was one question was COVID lung uh, COVID lung patient. He was he was dead and his lungs were examined. What was the finding that is asked? So this also I've looked at looked into the research papers and. Uh, the receptor was mentioning both findings that we will get the uh, alveolar hemorrhages, old and new hemorrhages, as well as we will get this fibrinous exudates. Fibrinous exudates. Uh, fibrinous exudates will be seen. Um, so I have seen two papers where the answer was that the, the most common finding was old and new alveolar hemorrhages, and one of them is mentioning both fibrinous exudates and alveolar hemorrhages. So I will leave this question guys. I don't know what the exam setter wanted. Uh, so I'll just leave this question because. I don't know what he wanted. So this question guys, question number 194. A child with increase in the TSI's thyroid hormone levels is normal. Best test to assess the functional status will be. So basically in this question, one important thing was mentioned is that the thyroid is a utopic. It was not ectopic, it was utopic. Utopic actually means normal in normal position. Utopic means normal position and, and uh, his uh, thyroid hormone levels were normal. The TSH was raised. Assess to assess the function status, what is to be done? What is the next investigation to be done? So if it is utopic, that is if it is in normal position, there is no use of technetium. Okay. And um, uh, thyroid receptor antibody uh, levels, this will be useful in case of Hashimoto's. But if it was Hashimoto's, I, this question is still a confusion for me, guys. But I, I have marked urinary iron equation. And these two questions is still a confusion for me. And... Uh, I don't know exactly what the exam center wanted. Okay, guys. So this was the compilation of all the questions which I have, ch I have changed the answer, which I had already mentioned. So this is the final comp compilation. Actually, I wanted to bring out a video of the cutoffs and all today, but uh, some people suggested that I do this video before, uh, and it's appropriate to discuss this before and tomorrow. Guys, tomorrow the video will come out of my my analysis of the paper and what will be the cutoff and what will be the expected ranks and all. So stay tuned guys and thanks a lot. Thank a lot of that's 25k guys and stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Thank you.